All right, it says we are live. Hello, Gun Nation. How's everyone doing this evening? I said hi to uh, Bald and Dennis Buckner, Rich B. We got Dirt Track 410 in the house. We got Dan Stoops. Hello. Hope y'all are all doing well. Uh, I'm sure more will be jumping in. Hopefully more will be jumping in. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I am in Tulsa, Oklahoma this evening. Hello, Clyde Cumberland. I am in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma uh, this evening, and I drove by an area in downtown, and they were doing some filming, so I don't know if that's for Tulsa uh, King or, you know, that Sylvester Stallone show or not. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it was just kind of blocked off, so I don't have any idea. Hello, Ranger 10, but that's the first thing I thought of was Tulsa King, because I, I guess this was like, I don't know, less than a year ago, I was out here and I was on a far back road and they had the road blocked off and I was at a customer, uh, customer's business and I was talking to him and he go, you know, we were talking and he goes, oh, well, I have to close down. And I was like, well, I noticed the road was closed and he said, yeah, they're filming a Tulsa King and they're going to block this whole road off. And uh, so that was like less than a year ago. So maybe they were doing some filming downtown um, you know, I don't know. Ranger 10's in the house. Pistol Pete is in the house. I hope y'all are all doing well this evening. And of course, if y'all have any questions, please ask away. Uh, this is kind of a QA and a that I was going to do uh, for everyone. And I see uh, someone else is having a Q&A this evening, too. Um, hello, Mike. Hi, how are you? Hope everyone is doing well. And I've got some projects in the works. Uh, I guess y'all have already seen part of them. Cause I've got videos on them, but I've got some projects going and uh, got some more uh, gear in and was able to put it on and get it all fixed up. So I think it's about finished. Um, so I'll do, what do y'all want to see on the unveiling? And I'll, you know, you already know what the gun is. It is the kel -Tec CP33. I've got it all, you know, I've done a bunch of stuff to it, and I had a bunch of parts come in for it, um, and all, everything I bought, none of it was sent in. Um, but do you all want to see, like, an unveiling? Uh, first, I, I have the shooting already done. There's a video on that. But when I do, but it's just the basic shooting of the gun, not the way I've got it set up now. <clears throat> but do you all want to see, like, a sit-down where I'm kind of going over everything I've done to it, or do you just want me to go to the range and shoot it and just try to talk about it at the shooting range? The only thing you run into is it could be a lot, a lot of bang, 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 and you can't hear, uh, or you can't hear me very well. So that's kind of why I didn't want to do it that way. But I thought before I go and shoot it the way it is now, um, you know, I could do an overview if y'all want to see something like that and talk about, you know, everything I've done to it. But, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do or whatever y'all think I, I, I should do, I'll do. <clears throat> Hello, Lake Ozark guy. A-Dubs is in the house. But, uh, yeah, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all want to see. Uh, what's happening in Tulsa? I get, uh, Pistol Pete, I think there were maybe... The Tulsa King, and it could be hell another movie. They've done a bunch of filming in, in Tulsa and stuff over the years, not just Tulsa King, but that was kind of what I was thinking. So I could be wrong. It didn't say, hey, filming Tulsa King, so I don't know. <clears throat> Let's see here. Rich B says, was in the gun store and looked at a SIG 226 with the Navy anchor on it. Does that gun still have a place today? I know it's been around forever, it seems. Yeah, it does. That's actually a really good gun. Um, if I was going to run a 226, that would probably be the one that I would get. Yeah, that's actually a very good, uh, very good SIG. Hello, Brian Duchesne. How are you? Hope you are well. Ohio Gun Gear, uh, our gear guy, is in the house. Uh, let's see here. Lake Ozark guy said I should un un doing an unveiling of it, shooting it, and then review your, your thoughts. Uh, on the gun. Um, okay. So yeah, because this is a series, you know, I've already got the first one out. The second one's coming out. It's already filmed. It's already done. Um, <laughs> YouTube demonetized the very first video. Uh, 
of just a box opening of the CP33. And I fought it and fought it and fought it. Um, and I think it's still, I think it's still demonetized. Let's see if they ever monetized it. I'm just curious, honestly. Oh, they did. Yeah, but it already lost its traction. Uh, and then I put the shooting video in the queue. They demonetized it instantly. And then I put it up for manual review and they just approved it. I mean, it it's crazy. But uh, uh, let's see here. Pistol P says MK5. Huey says, hey, Big J, uh, thoughts on the Nightcore EDC lights, uh, particularly newer EDC 33 and 35. I have the Nightcore EDC. Oh, God, what is it? They sent it to me. Um, I can't remember the damn name of it. It's a Nightcore EDC. I might even just be giving one of those away. I had them send me two of them so I could beat the shit out of one of them and, uh, and test the other one. And I've already started testing it. Uh, let's see here. It is the... I've got one of their dots in also, uh, the Nightwig dot. Uh, okay, that's their dot. Hang on, let me find the, Oh, here it is right here. Uh, the one they sent me. Okay, it's the brand, The I couldn't remember the number on it. It's the EDC 33. Uh, I've already started testing it and all that other stuff. Uh, Huey, I'm just going to be honest with you. I think it's pretty big. Um, it's super bright. You know, I've thrown it. I've done all that stuff in the backyard on the concrete, on my concrete patio. Um, and it's durable. It seems very durable, but it's pretty big. I mean, to carry in your pocket, um, I carry it in the door pocket of my car um, or my company car. You know, so I have it because I carry a... EDC pocket flashlight, the wedge. I've been carrying the Streamlight wedge. And um, I think it's kind of too big for a pocket light, uh, along with carrying my knife, my wallet, and all that other stuff. I just think it's too big. That's just my opinion. Some people might like that, but I carry quite a bit of stuff in my pockets. I think it's a good light, <clears throat> but I think it's too big for pocket carry or like an EDC pocket carry light. If you're gonna carry it like in a go bag or something, that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, the MK25 Pistol Pete, that is the that is the name of that uh, SIG 226, it's the MK, yep, that's it. But that's my opinion, Huey. I think, it, I think so far it's a good light. I've thrown it around, it does have a little um, cover where you kind of pull it back and then you charge it and then you kind of cover it back up. It does have a lockout mode. Um, it has a lot of lumens. It has a turbo mode. Uh, the sucker does get hot. I will let you know that. So, I mean, I guess if you just held it on turbo, but it'll it'll kill itself. I mean, it'll it'll actually shut down because it gets too hot. Uh, let's see here. Question: What would it take to make a 75D PCR compact to shoot as well as a Shadow Two compact? Um. You could send it to Cajun Gunworks or, um, you know, somewhere and have the trigger tricked out. The only thing that you're going to lose, the PCR does not have a front rail. I'm just going to tell you this. The front rail, even if you don't put a flashlight on it, the front rail does add a little more front weight uh, to it. So you're going to get a little less muzzle pop or a little less muzzle flip. Uh, I'm not recoil sensitive, but some people are. But just with the weight of that, uh, that rail... Uh, that would help. Um, but as far as the trigger, the hammer, all of that, Cajun Gunworks can do all that to make it shoot a little better. I would definitely put lock grips on it. I prefer the aggressive ones because it helps you plant that gun a little bit better uh, because it's a small gun for me. So I get a lot of movement unless I have, you know, really lock grips that bike very well just because it's such a small gun for me. Uh, but grips can also help fill out the gun a little bit better and help you shoot it better. Uh, you could get the palm swells, believe it or not, even if you have a medium size hand, large hand, extra large hand, the palm swells actually do help quite a bit with that gun. 
the real palm swells, not the rubber ones, because those will compress. But it's, I mean, PCR is a great gun. I do prefer the PO one if you're choosing between the two, but it's not going to shoot like a Shadow 2 compact. It's just not, no matter what you do to it. Totally kind of different trigger setup uh, because the Shadow 2 compact is single action or it's single, you know, double, but it has a very a much better trigger in my opinion. So you have to do some trigger work to the PCR. Um, Clyde is saying uh, 10.5 holographic versus dot. It's really whichever you prefer. If you prefer a dot or a holographic, uh, the holographic, you know, if you're staring at it, it's going to be more fuzzy and more blurry, uh, where the dot's going to be more crisp. If you're staring at the dot, that's not what you should do. You should look through the window and let both of them uh, just kind of hover out there. Um, you know, it's really your choice. If, for astigmatism, they say the holographics are better. I would probably agree with that. However, holographics eat batteries. They literally eat batteries where red dots do not. So that's something else. If you want to change the batteries a lot more often, you're going to have to do that on a holographic site. There's the turkey's opinion is in the house. Happy Jane Gun Nation. Thumbs up to you all. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. If y'all haven't checked out Turkey's Opinion, please do. Please do. He's got a good channel. Really good guy. Um, but, yeah, there's, um, you know, I've, uh, again, like I was saying earlier, I, I ordered, you know, the stuff that I was needing for that kel -Tec. I've already ordered two more mags. They're already in at Texas Gun Experience. I haven't been able to pick them up yet because I've been out of town. I just asked them to order two more for me. Like I said, I try to. If I can, I try to spend, you know, my money uh, locally uh, with my LGS. And I really like Texas Gun Experience. They treat me good. I've been a member there for a platinum member there for four years, over four years. Um, I really like everything that they uh, they offer there. As far as an indoor range, it is the best one that I've ever shot at. A lot of people ask me why I go there. Uh, it's probably about... Uh, 30, 30, 35 minute drive one way. Uh, and I have a lot of other gun ranges around my area, like super close to me, but it takes a gun experience. You can draw from the holster. You can do rapid fire. You can do what you want to do. I mean, they're going to watch you, make sure you're good to go. And then you do whatever you want to do as long as you're safe. Um, and I can't do that at any other range. They, it, all the other ranges will not even allow rapid fire. If you followed me way back when, I mean way back when, uh, I used to have Ranger Rick would run up to me and, oh, you're, you're shooting too fast. When I had the video on, you could hear him. Oh, you're shooting too fast. You need to slow down. You know, blah, blah, blah. You're scaring the other patrons. Uh, and I was like, I can't deal with this yet. You know, and outdoor range are, are awesome, but for convenience sake for me, because the closest outdoor range one way is like an hour. It's like an hour and 20 minutes uh, from me one way. So I just can't get there, you know, like I want to. The Romeo 8T, uh, Clyde, I have only looked through it. Being very honest with you, I've never shot one on a rifle. I've only held it and looked through it. I think it looks like a really nice dot. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's going to be a fine dot. I just don't have a lot of experience with it. Uh, it is the same weight. I believe it's 11 ounces. It's the same as the Huey Gen 2 that I have. That's holographic. The 8T is not holographic. It's a red dot. Um, it's got a really robust uh, cage built around it, which is steel and I think also titanium. Um, I think it would be a good option if, if you're in the market for it, but I don't have any personal hands-on, like I've shot it, beat it up, you know, lived with it. I don't have any of that kind of experience. And, you know, I tell you if I have or not, I don't fib, fib to y'all. Hello, Floridian. Uh, he is a uh, Houston. Okay. All right. Uh, Ranger is giving some information. Uh, he has one on the CMMG Banshee and 10 millimeter. It's one of the best dots I own. There you go. Okay. Good to uh, good to know. All right, Russell. 
He is from Katy, Texas. Very familiar with that area. Good seeing you again. I'm considering the HK45 as my first 45 or a Springfield Armory Krishan 5-inch. Uh, the HK45 is a great 45. Um, very, very nice pistol. The Grishon, I personally don't have any experience with it, um, but that's also a, 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 a single stack, I believe, um, or it might be um, it, the Springfield Armory. I don't know about that one. Uh, another one that's very underrated is the uh, FN uh, FNX forty or F, yeah FNX forty five. Uh, heck, it's fifteen plus one. So if you're looking for capacity. It's definitely a contender. Um, I've owned two of them. Great pistols. Shoot awesome. Never had one lick of problems with them. Um, I mean, they're really, really good guns. And I've had the HK45, and I've had the FNX45. Between those two, HK is an awesome gun. Don't get me wrong. But I prefer the FNX45 because of capacity and uh, you know the things you could do to it put a dot on it you know thread the barrel things like that i haven't i have not seen an hk45 you could put a dot on so that would be my choices and i don't know anything about the gerson personally so i don't want to speak out of my ass on that hello pelodrome how are you sir <laughs> it almost looks like you're sitting in a camper yeah it kind of feels that way uh this particular hotel is actually kind of cool it's a uh it's like a Wyoming hunting kind of vibe. Um, I mean, it's really, really nice. This is a very, very nice hotel. Um, like they've got a must, huge Mustang statue. They've got like uh, Mustang pictures on the wall uh, right up here. If you can see it, that's actually, uh, that's bear fur. So that's bear up there. Um, and they've got bear pelts, deer pelts, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff all through the hotel. It's actually a really cool hotel. <clears throat> but I'm not in a camper. <laughs> That's just the window outside of the hotel. Uh, MCO was saying when you had Phil Cashin on, he said MPA would be coming out with a new compensated pistol. Have you heard any other details? Can we expect to wait months or years? Actually, it's already, it's been out. Um, or they've got their version of it. It's basically the DS9, the full size 2011. And where the slots are, like on my DS9 or the DS9s, they're actually going in and, and cutting ports in the sides of the barrel. So it is available now um, for that model. I had mentioned to him also about a carry model. That one is not out yet. Um, you know, where it has like maybe like a built in comp or a port, like a big chunk port at the front and that one i think maybe they're still doing something on it uh or you know i haven't heard any more about it but they do have the ds9 version out now so if you're looking for the big one it's out if you're looking for the small one it's not out yet as as far as i understand it How can that Caltech you should get 33, 22 rounds off without issues? Rich B, it's a feat of, it's a feat of engineering. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's called a quad stack mag. Uh, it's pretty ingenious. That's another reason I wanted to get it uh, because of the capacity. It's very funky how you load it, but you have to be very meticulous of how you load it. Um, kind of like think about the sig p322 you know if you just drop them down in there you're going to jack that mag all up you're going to rim lock it and it's kind of the same thing with this keltec but you have to hold your tongue just right and i don't want to give anything away but i've got a full shooting video on it that's already made it's already in the queue so i'll probably be putting it out friday uh i shoot in that video i shoot two two full mags through it so you'll see it uh and in the keltec little manual it does say it has like a little break in so um you know just to kind of give you some information but you know you have to load it a certain way and if you load it a certain way it does feed uh so you know not to give too much away but and you 
got to see the net, the video y'all will see coming soon, probably on Friday is me shooting it and how it's functioning stock all plain. I've already converted. I've already done everything to it. <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy. So you'll just have to hold and I think you'll, I think you'll be kind of like, what, you know, when you see what I've done to it, I had to order the parts, put everything on it. Um, so it's, it's cool. I, I, I really, I dig it. Hello, Indy Irish. How are you? Yeah, I thought the Springfield Gershon was a 1911. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're not wrong about the camper look. You know, when I was looking at it before I went live, I was like, damn, this kind of does look like I'm in an RV or something. Uh, Brian said, took the dog to the vet today and walked out $355 lighter than I went in there with apartment. Uh, or, see, appointment was for a rash on her foot. I'm vet shopping. Yeah, we've dealt with that too. We have two dogs. Whew. That shit's not cheap. Uh, let's see here. What is your go-to brand for suppressors? I, you know, I mean, I've got suppressors, but I'm not like the biggest suppressor guru. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say I am. Um, you know, it, it depends on if you want like high flow. I mean, there's all kinds of different ones now. I really do like my trash Panda a lot. I shoot it on all my 308s, my 300 blackouts, my 556. You know, it's a smaller, uh, but it's all titanium. I mean, it's a great can. I really do love it. I have had no issues with it. It's a fantastic suppressor. Um, and then on the 22, I have the dead air mask. That was not my first choice. I wanted the Q El Camino, but they didn't have it in stock. So I got the dead air mask. Um, you know, it does sound pretty good, but what I hate is when you screw it on, if the end sticks and you start taking it off, your baffle, you'll pull it out and your end cap stays on there. And that pisses me off. Um, you know, even with tightening it down really tight and I don't want to put the, goo, you know, monster torque on it because I'm afraid I'll strip the threads out of it. But, uh, you know, it's just 22 can shit. You know, they should have, like, if you're screwing it on, they should have made opposite threads. So when you tighten it on, you're tightening it. When you're loosening it, you know, it doesn't come off. They should have done opposite threads to take it apart to clean it. But, you know, uh, God, what is that high flow brand? Um, Hux Works. Um, that's supposed to be a really, really great can. Uh, Harry has multiple cans. Lynx Defense has multiple cans. I would probably reach out to them and maybe just in one of their videos, you know, just uh, throw that question up in one of their videos. And even if it's not related to what the video is, because they have a pretty good selection of, of uh, suppressors and they could probably give you a better, uh, a better opinion. I just have, you know, a few. So. Yep, if you load it a certain way, single shot. Yeah, and that can happen on any 22 with Rimlock. If you're familiar with, you know, like double stack. That's why a lot of the old uh, 22s, pistols like my Ruger 2245 and stuff like that, um, you know, they just all single stack because uh, it's in and they're at that angle. So you don't really get Rimlock. But I would definitely end up, or I would definitely, and I've recommended this many times, I would stay with a 7.62 can or 30 caliber can for your first can because you can shoot 300 blackout. You can shoot, uh, you know, 308. You can shoot 5.56. You can shoot all that through it. So it's more versatile. And some people shoot 22 through uh, 7.62 cans. I will not do it. 22 is so freaking dirty. It's going to glob up your can. Now all you've got to do is shoot a 308 through it and it'll help blow it out, but I just don't need all that, that molten lead uh, inside of a 30 cal can. So I'm just not gonna do it. I know people who do it, but I'm not gonna do it. I don't need to create baffle strikes. Yeah, there's some good prices on cans and everybody's saying they're getting them back quicker. So, you know, this would probably be the time to grab one. 
Uh, Indy Irish says, what other options are out there for a four to five inch PCC other than the CZ Scorpion? I've seen mixed reviews on the CZ. Uh, you can get uh, a CMMG Banshee. Uh, you can get a BNT. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of variables. Uh, there's other options out there. Some are more expensive. Actually, all of them are probably more expensive uh, that are that run well uh, other than the CZ Scorpion. And, you know, they are the CZ Scorpion has the huge bolt in it. So you get that clunk, clunk, clunk. Not that it's bad. It's just more harsh than some of the other ones. Uh, and of course, you could go, you know, with a very, very small AR, but you can have your buffer tube and things like that. You can always put a law of tactical. It just depends on how much money you want to spend. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things out there. It, you know, budget is not an issue. You know, BNT has some really, really nice pistols and they have some really small ones. Even SIG does as well. They have a nine millimeter, what is it, the Rattler or something? It's really small. But then you got to look at it this way, and I've actually said this in my brain. I'm like, okay, a really, really small PCC, you know, it's like Glock Mag, shoots nine millimeter. You know, my uh, Glock 17L is a six inch barrel. Most of those small PCCs, PCCs are four to five inch barrels. I mean, I could just shoot my Glock 17L and get velocity out of it and not have to have a PCC. You know, honestly, but it just depends on what you want. <clears throat> yeah, and the Strybog too. I personally don't have, I've never shot a Strybog. So I don't have any personal hands on experience with one. I've played with them and, you know, finger banged them and stuff like that. I just haven't shot one yet. But a lot of people say they're really good. I think the first gen, they had some problems with the mags and then came out with a new mag revision. But I think going forward, all of them are pretty much squared away from what I understand or what I've seen. And I think Bald, uh, he he praises them. So I think he's shot them. And I just don't have any personal experience with them. And yeah, MCX has been around forever. I mean, they are good, but they're definitely expensive. And I think they're honestly, the thing I, that, kind of bugs me oh, of course it's a sig but i'm just you know hating on that i'm just being a butthead on that but they're pretty damn heavy for what they are they shouldn't be that freaking heavy some of these mcx's are they're little chunky tanks speaking of sig i had another sig failure um <laughs> one of my romeo fives i haven't called sig yet i just discovered this I bought three Romeo fives like three years ago uh, and just threw them on some guns. You know, I was just kind of needing some, you know, I mean, the Romeo five is a pretty good guy. And I threw them on some guns and then I, you know, tested it on some guns. Then I took them off, put them in. A, I always keep them. I don't leave them in the box. I put them in a Ziploc bag. I put the instructions. I put the little extra plate, you know, like your low mount and the tall mount that was on it. I put the little covers and I put them all in separate Ziploc bags and I zip them up and I throw them in a bin. Anyway, so I knew I had one in there. So unzipped it, you know, held it up there and it was real dim. So I was like, okay, it's been in there for a long time. This thing's only been on one gun and it didn't even live on that gun. Um, I probably, honestly, maybe, maybe, put less than 200 rounds through that dot. And then I ended up changing it. Uh, because I put uh, I put therm I put a thermal on it on that particular gun. So anyway, I uh, you know I got it out and it was real dim and I was like, oh, it's been in that bag for a long time. It just needs a battery, so I threw a battery in it. And then you know I would turn it up to high, and I would go want to click down one, and then it'll go all the way to almost night vision. And I'm like, what the hell? So then I'd click it up and it'd go all the way back to high. It wouldn't go to the next up or the next down. And it was going between high and like super low. And then I'll take it all the way to night vision and I'll click it up one and then it'll go jump back to high. So the little buttons are all fried. Something's wrong with it. So I'm going to have to call SIG. Supposedly they have a lifetime warranty on it. We all know my track record with SIG. They're going to pull up my name. I'm not going to tell them who I, you know, oh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm not going to do any of that shit. I'm just going to 
say, hey, here's my name, you know, blah, 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 and my address. They'll probably pull it up. If they see all my history with them and all the shit that they won't fix, they're probably going to say, screw you. Uh, but they claim to have a lifetime warranty. So we're going to see how they handle this. But whatever. <clears throat> my guy says, what? Sig rubs Big J the wrong way. <laughs> Not like they told you that they don't know you, uh, what you're doing. Yeah. But, you know, it is, it's, it, yeah. I mean, I've had, out of all the name brands, and I'm not hating on SIG, but out of all the name brands I've had, I've had more problems with their shit out of any gun brand that I have. It's been SIG. Now, it could have just been the certain ones I'm getting. I don't know, but I do not have a track record, a good track record with SIG. So we'll see how they handle this dot. I looked it up. It says lifetime warranty. You don't have to have your receipt. I bought them for primary arms, um, you know, so they could pull the receipt up, I guess, or my receipt from back when, if, if they had to have it. But said that you don't need the box. You don't need the receipt. It says all this on SIG's thing. It just says contact customer service. So we're going to contact them and see what they say. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Turkey Spinney says Romeo 5 is my go-to red dot. That stinks. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the other two that I have still work great. So this was, and this could have just been, you know, I got them like when they first came out. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Russell is saying for the price point, the FNX 45 is out of my range currently. I love my VP9, so I'm looking at the HK45, much like the barrel length of the PPK. I prefer the capacity or the prefer the 1911 capacity. Uh, wouldn't matter. Those HK 45s are not cheap unless you found one used. Um, they're actually way more expensive than the FN, FNX 45s where they used to be. But and heck, you can find FNX 45s for very reasonable prices. I've seen them in use, used in gun stores for really good prices. Um, usually much better than a used HK 40 HK 45. But um, you know, it's it's whichever. The HK 45 is a great gun. It's just if you ever want to put an optic on it, you've got to mill it and all that other stuff. And you could find a regular HK or excuse me, FNX 45, and you'd have to mill it too if it's not optic ready. Hello, Matt Moore. How are you? Scott 79 is in the house. And I sent, uh, I did send that Glock 17 holster out. I think it was DB uh, on the chat last week. You know, uh, I said I had a Glock 17 holster. Or excuse me, a Glock 17L race holster that doesn't fit anything except the Glock 17L because it's too long. It's specialty made. It's a skeletonized holster, and it won't fit mine anymore because I have the comp and the threaded barrel on it. <clears throat> so I sent it out to him today. I was delayed because this weekend was super super busy, and I've been traveling. But I did drop it in the mail today, so I haven't seen him on the chat yet. Um, I sent him the tracking information on his email. So if y'all happen to see DB, uh, jump in here, um, you know, let him know or remind me to let him know. I haven't seen him yet though. Um, but yeah, so that little, uh, CP 33, it's, it's kind of taken a life on itself. I've got, I think I have more. I think I have more accessories on it than the freaking gun cost um, or more, you know, set up on it. So, but I've been playing around with it, you know, just kind of LARPing around the house with it. And I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I still have to put a lot more rounds through it. Uh, Brian is asking, BJ, how is your business? Is the economy on tilt? Uh, yeah, I mean, it has definitely slowed down. Um, you know, a lot of people just don't have extra income. Uh, so it has, it has slowed down a little bit. Um, you know, but part of what I'm in is even not meaning you have to buy a new vehicle to have what I do. You can have an older one 
and uh, you know a lot of people are spending the money to fix up their older vehicles so i mean you know people are still buying it uh or buying stuff it's just not as robust as it was so it has it has slowed down but not like oh my gosh it slowed down so bad you know uh it's not doing well uh let's see here what are your thoughts on a 509 versus pop i bet that means pdp i bet that's what he's saying a 509 like 509 tactical versus pdp that's probably what you're what you're saying um let me know if that's what it is I'm not a PD. Uh, I'm well. I'm not a PDP fan. Uh, I think they're pretty chunky. I think they could have made that gun a lot slimmer because to carry it, I put it in a holster. It wasn't my gun, but I put it in a holster and I put it on. And I'm like, God, this thing's thicker than my freaking 2011s. Um, it's very top. It, it, it's just a high bore axis. It's very clunky on the top. Um, I've shot one and I think it has too much tilt personally. It's the way it's sprung. Um, and I'm not recoil sensitive. Y'all have seen me shoot comps, non comps. I mean, I can shoot a flat gun, but it's just the way it's made. I'm just not a huge fan of the PDP. I have the 509s. Um, I actually prefer the 509 even over the PDP. That's just my personal experience, not not beating up anybody that likes their PDPs. Um, I think there's, I think there's better guns out there uh, than the PDP in my opinion. I'm not saying that they're not, um, that they won't run. I'm not saying that at all. They do, they run. But I'm just not a, I'm just not a PDP fan. And again, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, so don't take it personally. Now the PPQ, I had the PPQ for a long time. It's a great gun. However, I will still say this, the PDP and the PPQ are, they boy, they flip. They're very light in the front. That's just the way they're made. So, I mean, I've sat there and shot them and they're like, bing, bing, and I'm like, good Lord, I'll crank down on it. And it's like, bing, bing. it's just the way it's made. And you watch anybody shooting them. I mean, even Mike from Tactical Considerations, he's a he's a monster. Um, and his still is flipping like hell. You know, it's just the way they're made. My five my 509 without a comp shoots flat as shit. And it's not as top heavy. So yeah, Palodrome, I agree, man. It is. It's 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 insane. Yeah, I mean, they are chunky. They're chunky girls, you know, uh, and nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of people like them. Norwood likes his. A lot of people like them. Uh, Ranger 10 says, I'm a big SIG fanboy, but they do beta test products on the public, which I don't like. Uh, every SIG product I own is great, but I know peeps who have had bad ones. I agree with that. I've said that, God, five years ago, way back on the the three guys gun chat, you know, I was, I carried SIGs, I had SIGs and I said, that's what I said. I said, there we're beta testers for them. Oh, and I ripped my damn shirt. So I'm not a poverty stricken person. So don't think that, but I ripped my damn shirt today. Matter of fact, when I was getting shit out of the trunk, I caught it on the little, it's windy as shit here. Y'all are any of y'all are in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It has been like 50 mile an hour winds today. I had the trunk up and I was getting stuff out of it and the damn, the wind blew the trunk and it caught it and ripped my damn shirt as I was coming into the hotel. <laughs> so, no, the SIG Romeo Zero, that is a piece of shit. They should have never made that dot. That is like 70 or 100 bucks. Just you might as well throw it out the window. That thing is a piece of shit. I have buddies uh who have them and every one of them have failed hell uh bald and curious uh, had his fail trigger bars had his fail uh, two of my friends had theirs fail i mean th that that thing is not even a freaking dot it's a piece of shit. so you're exactly right it's a paperweight i can't believe they're even selling that thing 
but it is what it is. Worked good on the 322. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's probably, but they were pushing it on the SIG uh, 365s. They were like, oh, this is the dot for the 365s. Yeah, there. That's a, that is one horrible dot. Um, I've got some other dots, and that a couple I even bought. I was just trying them out. Uh, one is called a Zelensky Oak or something like that. It's like a big old RMR window, and uh, it's super bright, man. That thing is insanely bright. I mean, it'll it. It looks like you're looking at the damn sun. That's how bright it is. It's probably one of the brightest dots. A 17L, and I was just kind of playing with the adjustments on it. The adjustments suck. Uh, it it they, it really sucks. It has no tactical clicks, but it's not an expensive dot either. You know, it's one of those, some seven, you know, group of seven-year-olds made it, I'm sure. It's one of them cheap China dots. Uh, Dan is asking, uh, currently, what would you compare the Shadow 2 Compact? Um, oh, what would you compare to the Shadow 2 Compact? I mean, the, I guess a kind of a comparison is the, um, you know, what's close, not super close, uh, what's close to it is like a, um, I would say a staccato C2 or staccato CS. Uh, I would say maybe a little bit bigger than a CZ P01 or a PCR uh, or the DWX Compact, you know, except that doesn't have a rail. I suppose they're having a rail version too. Um, trying to think of another one. The 75D, uh, uh, all steel, it's a, probably a little bit bigger than that. Um, I mean, I think the Shadow 2 Compact is a great gun. If it fits your hand, it's a great gun. It has a phenomenal trigger out of the box. I've said this before. You can put a light on it. Uh, you can carry it half cocked, so you really don't have to have the safety, the thicker safety if you do. The CZ Shadow 2 full-size safety will go right on it, no issue. Plugs right in there if you can find one. I've got them because I've got other Shadow 2s. Um, I mean, I think it's I think it's a great gun. Oh, and it takes, you know, CZ 75 mags, so that's always a plus, too. <clears throat> yeah, the original Defender Dot was not good. They've redone it. It's supposedly better. I played with one. The refresh, the refresh rate sucked. Um, it was it was pretty damn bad. I mean, you could just take the dot and move it. And it was going. You see the little dots. It just couldn't keep up. But I think they fixed that with this newest version. This was the first one they came out with. Uh, it, it was not good. But and there's junky dots. There's good dots. You know, in any dot, even if. If, if it's a good, good dot, they can fail. Uh, to, <laughs> I've had to send back two Delta Point Pros, one Trigicon R, uh, SRO. Um, what else? Um, Acro P2 is still going super strong. My um, Steiner MPSs are going strong. However, the battery life sucks. Uh, I'll, I'm 100% honest with you, the battery life sucks. Um, you know, and, and not knock on wood, I have, I probably have 14 hollow suns and I'm not even joking. I can show them to you. I have 14 hollow suns. A lot of the old 507s where the battery was on the bottom and I have the new Ur 507s and I have the 507K. I've never had one hollow sun shit the bed and I have some that are five years old never had an issue just change the batteries and they work i'm not saying you can't get a bad one because you can get a bad one in any of those brands obviously but you know i mean it is what it is and again people are like 
oh my gosh, I have seen on your guns where you don't have backup sights and you have a dot. What if that dot fails? I have said this a hundred times and I've proven it. I have videos. You can go back and watch them. I've had the dot completely turned off and I've shown everybody it's turned off. Literally both buttons turned off and I have no sights on the gun and I'm shooting it, you know, holding it and just rapid firing 10 rounds at like, you know, seven to 10 yards. And I've got a group that big, you know, maybe that big. So, um, because what you can do is you can use the frame of the optic, you know, the little frame, you can frame it right in the center of the chest and you can dump them all in there. Um, and you can also point shoot. I can do the same thing with irons because I can't see irons very good anymore with just due to my eyes. I can still see them, but they're just not perfect for me. Um, but that's just because I've done that. <laughs> I've done that grip, you know, I don't know, a million times. I mean, a lot of shooters have. So don't get all wrapped around the wheel about, I got to have backup irons. I got to have this. I got to have that. I got to have this. Um, if you can shoot, you can use the frame of the optic uh, to shoot with. So, <clears throat> uh, Russell is saying, I've never used optics on my sidearm, strictly iron sights. I'm considering a red dot for my 43X and or P365 just to test the concept and test my eyes. Um, I would say, Russell, when you get into it, give it a fair shake. Also, when you're shooting, do not stare at the dot. That's the number one thing everybody does. Look through the dot at your target and let the dot get in the way. So, it's, you know, it's basically target focused. You're focused on the target, not the dot. Once you start getting your brain wrapped around not looking at the dot, you will shoot better and you can shoot faster. I've even proven it to my buddies who are iron guys, and now they're dot guys. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but, you know, it's kind of like, I keep going back to this. I've been around for a while when everybody bought the ARs, and, oh, I'm using iron sights. LPVOs and red dots are stupid. Now everybody who buys an AR, they put a red dot on it the next day or the same day. So <clears throat> just, you know, my opinion Hello, Lynn Holt. How are you, sir? Norwood is saying, uh, Big J, have you seen any CZ Shadow 2 compacts out there anywhere? Uh, a while back, I saw one at Texas Gun Experience. Uh, they had it for like three days. I, you know, there's a picture on my community tab where I'm holding it in my hand, just showing it's it's a little small for me. Um, but they sold it, and I haven't seen one back yet. Um, I've been to a couple of gun stores here in Tulsa, haven't seen one. Uh, they sell pretty damn quick. So, you know, you, you might be able to get on the old Google and, you know, maybe find one somewhere. Um, Oakwood Guns used to carry a ton of CZs. They, they usually, they're a big CZ dealer. It's called Oakwood Guns, I believe. Um, I would check with them. They might have one in stock and they ship to all the FFLs too. Lynn Holt says, do you know how the Acro P2 is holding up? Uh, yeah, because I still have it. Uh, I mean, I love it uh, or like it. Uh, mine's holding up great. I've had it for, what, two years now, I guess. Um, and I've done this kind of purposely. I'm still on the same battery, and that thing stays on all the time. I also have the higher intensity because I run a light on it. So if I ever kick the light on, it doesn't wash the dot out. So I do run it a little bit brighter than normal. Uh, the thing is still chugging along. I'm going to change the battery. Matter of fact, I thought when I got home, I'd just throw a new battery in it anyway, because I usually do it every year on my birthday. I was just trying to see how long it would go since I turned up the intensity. Uh, and I carry 2032s in my backpack. I've got tons of them. So when I carry that gun, I could easily just unscrew it with a quarter and change it out super quickly. I mean, and again, if something happened, I can use the frame of the optic. So not too worried about that. And it does have backup sights too. Um, because they came on the gun. But uh, no, I, I still like it, have no problems with it. I think it's a great dot. If it's if I'm looking for like a, I hate this term, but go to war dot, you know, uh, end of world dot, you know, that's probably one I would choose. It's, it's really good, it's been great for me. So 
I know some people had issues with them when they first came out. I got one of the ones that first came out. I haven't had any problems with it yet. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let me jump on this one. I only own Hall Sun and Sig Optics. The one I have, or the one that I have of both. None have failed yet. I had some vortexes and upgraded them to Hall Suns. Uh, yeah, and one of the first dots was that, what was it, the Venom, Vortex Venom or something? Man, that thing failed almost instantly. I had it on a, where did I have it on? I had it on something and it shit the bed pretty quick. And they sent it back. Uh, replaced it with a new one. They just sent me a new one. They were, they were awesome customer service, but when they sent it in the brand new one in the package all wrapped up, I just, I got rid of it. I just sold it. And that was when they were still popular. I was like, eh, this one seems a little flimsy to me and I don't think it's going to last. So yes, Ranger, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. When you shoot dots, both eyes open 100%. Scott ordered him a micro dagger, the one with the comp on the slide. Yeah, I kind of like the SIG uh, X macro. Yeah, I mean, I think they're good guns. Uh, I personally haven't shot one yet, so I don't want to speak out of my ass, but um, I know a lot of people are buying them and like them. So, and hell, Palmetto has a great warranty, a lifetime warranty, and they're not going anywhere. So I wouldn't feel bad about buying one of those and trying it out. No problem, Lynn. Yeah, I don't I don't think the Vortex, you know, that, that's really surprising to me. And I've said this, I even said this to Vortex. I uh, I know the marketing guy at Vortex, and they've never sent me anything for free, so don't think that. But, you know, I've got his number and I've talked to him and I'm just like, why do y'all not, y'all make all these great, like the Huey and the, the Razor HD. And I mean, you make all these fantastic scopes. Why have you not made a pistol dot that will hold up that's worth a shit? And they're like, oh, we, we're in the process. Of, I mean, I've heard this. We're in the process of it. We're, you know, we're making one, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, so, I mean, I just, I don't understand why they haven't made, you know, I know they've got this new one, the Defender, but the first gen failed. So this next one might be good, but... You know, I don't know. I'm just like, man, they need to have a like an enclosed, you know, I just thought they would jump on the bandwagon and get some of these knocked out, you know, to give us more options. But the Defenders, the only one I've seen so far. Uh, I do plan on adding a pick rail to my Marlin Model 60 and maybe a Bushnell red dot over my three by nine by 40. Thanks for your advice and suggestions and opinion. Sure. No problem. <clears throat> yeah, matter of fact, I was digging through a bucket the other day, um, looking at a bunch of dots that I have, and <laughs> I found like five. I don't even know where the hell they came from. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I bought them, of course, but I don't know they ended up in this bucket because I put a lot of stuff in bins. Um, you know, I have like a bin, and they're labeled, so it's like optics. You know, blah blah blah, AR parts, pistol parts. Uh, stuff like that. So that way, when I slide them out, I can look and know exactly what's in those buckets. Um, and I, so I went through this bucket the other day and man, I had like, there's like five Bushnell TRS 25s in there. Um, some of them were still working. I, mean, I haven't used one of those in shit, probably seven or eight years. Um, and I don't remember them having like the you know, the turn off function, the shake awake. I don't remember any of them having that, especially these old ones. Some of them were lit up, but they were, they were very dim. And then some of them weren't. So I put batteries in them and I was checking them and one of them wouldn't do shit. So I guess it shit the bed. Uh, and I don't know what, even what the warranty on, is on those. So I don't know, but, um, you know, I was pretty surprised that some of those, I mean, cause they hell, Amazon had a sale like way back when, and I bought them and I want to say they were like 40 bucks each or 35 bucks. I mean, they were just having this big blowout sale. And I was like, well, shit, I'll buy a bunch of them and, you know, give them to friends and all that other stuff. And then I was asking friends, hey, you need a dot? You want one of these? You know, I was just going to give them to them. And they're like, oh, no, I'm good. And so I'm 
uh, like ended up with them. So I started playing around with them and throwing them on stuff like on 22s and, you know, just all kinds of rifles and stuff, just playing around with them. And, um, you know, they're, they're not bad dots either. I still would prefer, um, you know, one of the hollow suns or the Romeo fives or something like that. Three by nine on that 22. Yeah. I mean, 22s are fun as hell. On one of my 22s, it's the precision one. I've got a, what is it? It's a four by four by 24 by 48 or something. It's a big ass. It's a, one of those diamond backs, Vortex diamond backs. And it's a great scope. I mean, for the price, it's a really, really good scope, especially for a 22. Now, the clarity is not perfect. You know, don't don't get that twisted, but, you know, it works well for that rifle. Pranic is in the house. Been having long Wednesdays and, and just missed the chat. Hello, all. Hey, man, welcome. I'm glad you're on. But yeah, if y'all have any questions or comments or anything like that, you know, we'll we'll go, you know, another 10 minutes or so, something like that. Uh, but, you know, I've got that project working. I've got another project working. Um, I've also uh, went through the safe or safes the other day and kind of, you know, dug out some some oldies, um, you know, and I'm probably going to be revisiting those, you know, to kind of say, hey, do you, I still think this one you know, is worth its salt. And some of them are some guns that a lot of people really like. I just don't shoot them a whole lot because I have a large assortment of them, of different guns. But, um, you know, I was just thinking about pulling some of them out, throwing them on the table, maybe kicking on the camera and just like, you know, hey, I've had this gun for this long. You know, I've got, I do have a lot of rounds through a lot of them. But, you know, what do I think? Does it still apply today? Is it kind of old technology? You know, something like that. Let me know if y'all want to see something like that. Uh, I was thinking, you know, going back and kind of doing some revisits on some of the guns that I have. And even talking about some of the really old guns that I have. Um, I've had a lot of requests. You know, everybody's like, you need to show revolvers. You don't have any revolvers. I'm like, yes, I have revolvers. Um, let me know if y'all want to see revolvers. Um you know, I haven't, I've never shown them on the channel. Well, I'll take that back. I've shown one in a picture on my, on the community tab. You could dig through there. Uh, it's one of my 357s. And, but let me know if you want to see anything with revolvers. Um, you know, I'm not a huge revolver shooter. I did back in the day. I used to shoot them all the time. Remember, I grew up on revolvers in 1911s. So that's what we had. Um, but, you know, what do you think about the, uh, you know, do you want me to revisit some old guns? I've had a lot of people asking me like, hey, what's, do you have other guns than 2011s? I'm like, yeah, you must be new to the channel, but yes, I do. So let me know. Uh, let's see. You shoot a BNT APC-9. How's the trigger? I have, I've shot a, a BNT. I don't know if it was the APC-9. I can't remember. Uh, the one that I shot was pretty nice. I mean, BNTs are not, they're not slouchy guns, but I don't remember that. I don't remember the exact, like, man, this is a great trigger. I don't remember that, but also don't remember saying, oh, this trigger sucks. And I'll usually say, hey, because I'm a trigger snob. I hate to say that, but I'm a trigger, I'm a trigger snob. So if that would have stuck in my brain, if it would have sucked. So I don't know if it sucked. I can't remember. But I have shot one before, and I don't know if it's the, AP, uh, the APC-9. It was the small one, and it was cool. I mean, I liked it. I uh, love the old gun, collect, or gun collection guns. You have some cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I can do it if y'all want to want to see something like that. Uh, yes. Uh, Rich B, does the Shadow 2 Compact have available an extended magazine to help with larger hands? Yes, you can put uh, plus two extensions on it very easily. And plus, remember, it will take a full-size Shadow 2 mag. So it'll take the big boys. Uh, when I used to shoot my um, P01, I would stick the 75 mags in it, and I would have a big mag hanging out of the bottom of it. So, yeah, it'll take a full-size mag. Paladrome says he still loves wheel guns. Yeah, I mean, they're cool. I mean, back in the day, we shot a ton of them. 
Uh, with me having a 10 and a half 300 blackout, is it worth it to have like a 12 and a half 308 pistol or just stick with a 300? Oh, <laughs> it's night and day. Uh, 308 is definitely different than 300 blackout. Uh, I have a 12 and a half 308. I absolutely love it. I have a 18 inch 308. I have, I mean, I have a bunch of 308s uh, and I have a bunch of 300 blackouts. Uh, I even have a 300 blackout in 12 and a half. Um, you, you, 308 has a lot more oomph than a 300 blackout. Um, you know, I kind of look at those as two different guns and two different purposes. Uh, yes, your 300 blackout will do a lot. It'll do a ton. But if you're trying to take out like engine blocks and stuff like that, I would rather have the 308 in that situation. They'll both do the job. They'll both do what you want to do. But if you really need to punch through concrete, you really need to try to get through some stuff. 308 is going to be your friend. That's why I kind of prefer to have both. You don't have to. Most people don't have to. I probably won't ever officially have to. I just want it if I need it. <laughs> man, come on. Floridian, no, I'm growing my mullet, man. I got that got that freaking hippie hair going, man. That's one thing I've been blessed with is great hair. I have, I'm not thinning. I'm not bald. I have been blessed with great hair. So I wanted to grow it out. I used to have that, sh I mean, back way back in the day, I had it pretty damn long. And then I wore it high and tight forever. Um, but, you know, I just want to grow it out. I'm getting ready for my uh, daughter's wedding. So not that she likes long hair. My wife actually likes the longer hair. But uh, so I've <laughs> also been spending a ton of money on a wedding. Whew. So... Uh, Paladrome says he would not want a 308. 308, a shorty 308 will throw out some flames too. It will, it's a fire breather. So, yeah, and that's the thing that I always suggest about 300 blackout. You know, if you've got a 556, it's easy to have a, a 300 blackout. It's so easy. Same lower, same bolt, same mags. You know, you're just snapping an upper on it. So that's totally the benefit of that 5.56 five, and 300 blackout. 308 is a whole different animal. You've got to have different mags. You've got, you know, different bolt, different charging handle. You know, there's there's a lot of difference there. So, you know, Ranger saying, you know, switching. It's just if you want something. Man, 8.6, bald and curious, that's no joke. 8.6 is pretty damn awesome. But and that's something else I would like to have. But I'm just like, good lord, man. But hello, Tristan. How are you? Yeah, eight six is legit. It's three three eight Lapua, and a what a six five cartridge. I mean, it, you can get supersonic. <laughs> like it's like it's like uh, I guess you could say like what a. It's kind of like the the daddy of the 300 blackout so i mean it's it's legit it's cool congrats on the daughter getting married hope you like the guy yeah he's a good guy uh they've been together for quite a while um yeah he's a lot taller than me but like i have told him we had a come to jesus meeting i mean he's not a bad guy but i just said i don't care how tall and how big you are because he's six five or no he's six six um where's a 16 size 16 shoe i said i don't care how big you are you hurt my kid or you do anything wrong and i will i will own you so and he understands that so we're all good but no he's a really good guy um so i don't think i'll ever have any problems out of him because my daughter is my pride and joy don't mess with my daughter uh, let's see here. So I have a 16 inch 308 pros and cons of 12 and a half pistol versus the 16. Keep the 16 Clyde. Yeah, not a big deal. The, the 12 and a half is more of a fun gun. Uh, it's easier to throw in a bag. Uh, it's shorter, you know, um, you are going to lose velocity. 
So with the 12 and a half, uh, but you're good. If you've got a 16, you're good. You don't, you don't, you don't need, you don't need it. So the word that strikes fear in every father's heart, wedding venue. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, wedding venue, reception venue or party, whatever you call it. Uh, after wedding deal, vendors, caterers, DJ. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just throw on money. Just throw it. Just throw it on out there. I know. Oh, but guess what? She asked me for a wedding present. Then I'm going to do it. But uh, she's she's my kid. Yeah. Guess what? She asked for a, a wedding present. She wants a new gun. <laughs> yes. Raised her right. And I'm turning him into a gun guy. So that's good, too. But uh, let's see here. Uh, eight six sounds interesting, but there have been too many new rounds in recent years come and go. I will wait to see if it passes muster. Yeah, and I agree with you, Paladrome. I totally agree with you. Uh, and that's kind of what I've been waiting on the eight six. Um, you know that that's kind of what I'm. That's kind of what I've said. Ooh. Tristan is asking, uh, what's been your favorite police trade-in firearm? Um, I've only bought, I mean, just being honest with you, I've only bought one police trade-in, I think, yeah, one police trade-in in my whole life, and it was a SIG 226, the, just the original plain Jane one. Uh, or no, I take that back, I bought two. One was a Beretta, what is it, Night uh, the original Beretta? Just the plain Jane one, the, uh, God, I can't even think of the number. I'm tired. <laughs> um, so I bought two. The regular Beretta, M9A1, or whatever the hell it's called, not, or whatever, I, I can't even think. And then the SIG 226. Um, and they're both great guns, um, you know, if that's what you're looking for. I wasn't in love with the 226. It shot perfectly. It ran perfectly. Uh, no issues. The trigger sucked. Uh, it did not have the SRT trigger or whatever that's called in it, but you could have easily changed that. That was way, way, way back. Um, and I just kind of fell out of love with it. The Beretta, I liked it, but the problem I have with the Berettas is the grip's too short. So my hand hangs off. So when I change the mags really quickly, I pinch all the meat right here it just pinches it straight off but again i've only bought two police trade-ins so i got them at gt distributors in garland or dallas texas i think at that part that side's listed as garland or dallas i can't remember but that's where i got them back in the day yeah and i think the 86 will take off with a lot of hunters and stuff the only thing right now it's like two bucks a round <laughs> So, and the eight sixes aren't cheap to buy because they're not everybody's building them. You know, Q's got them, Faxon's got them. There's very limited people who have the eight six right now, unless you built one, I guess. But I'm kind of like Paldrome and other people. I just kind of want to wait a little bit longer, see how everything pans out, wait till everything maybe comes down. I don't have to be first to the party by any means. Uh, so that's why I've been waiting, you know, and I, I kind of want, you know, I want to be able to shoot one, uh, you know, go in and shoot it. Q had a, uh, a, like one of those shooting events in my local area. They had one in the colony and they had the eight, six there where you could go and shoot it for free. I think you could take like five shots, but I also was like, man, if I go up there and shoot that thing, I'm probably going to fall in love with it. Or I'm going to be like, holy crap. I want that gun. And I was just like, man, I'm not prepared for all that right now. Well, here's the thing right now. If you buy the 8.6 mini fix uh, or the 8.6 full size fix, if you buy that from Q right now, you actually get a free suppressor. They have a promo going right now where you get a free can. And that's freaking crazy. If I had just income right now if it wasn't for this wedding 
I'd probably go buy one because you get a free can, and I think the can's like twelve. No, they don't pay the tax stamp, but so you pay the two hundred dollars, but they pay for the can. So that's a hell of a deal. They've got it going until I guess they stop it. I don't know when that's going to be, but that's only for the queue. If you bought the Faxon, you still have to buy the the can. But yeah, that was like really tempting when I saw that promo come out. I was like, oh man, you know. But then I looked at the ammo cost, and there's only like certain people that are making the ammo. So I was like, eh. But yeah, that would be cool. But I kind of want to shoot one and just, you know, get it. I mean, of course, it has no kick, you know, or any of that kind of stuff. But man, a 338 Lapua, that's. <laughs> I've shot a 338 Lapua rifle. Matter of fact, I shot my buddies before he passed, and uh, that's the farthest I've ever shot, and it was 1,250 yards. That's the farthest I've ever shot a rifle in my life uh, was with his 338 Lapua, and it was an AI. Uh, I mean, this rifle was super, super nice. I need a job. I need to get the heck out of this house. Future X is killing me. Yeah, man, you need to come to Texas or get the heck out of there. <laughs> My daughter's getting married in June. I need a second and third mortgage for her wedding. I feel you, Big J. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't go completely crazy. Uh, I mean, it's very nice. It's a super nice venue and all that other stuff. But man, God, these prices on this shit. It's like, damn, you got to pay everybody. And it's the deposits and it's the, you know, this and it's the that. And it's just like, holy shit. Uh, yes, Rich B, I have actually reloaded. I went to Humble Marksman's house and reloaded some nine, like first, you know, clean the brass. I did all the steps and it was cool. It's just it's it's like i'm not saying it's bad it's not it's actually if you've got the time to do it but with my traveling i mean i'm not going to go home like on a weekend where i'm going to spend time with my family and also my dad with his situation right now you know i don't have time to go home and sit at a bench and just do that i just don't if i was not on the road and i had a lot of extra free time i would probably do it matter of fact uh my buddy that passed uh, his wife is selling all of his reloading equipment, um, and I've had the opportunity to buy it. It's not cheap because all of his stuff, he bought the best and the best of everything. Um, I mean, he had the new Corvette. He had all that stuff. Um, he's got, what is the name of that loader? Um, I'll tell you in just a second. Anyway, he's got the fully, or she has it, uh, his wife, uh, the fully automated loader. And it's really, really nice. It is called a Mark 7 Apex 10 Progressive Reloading Press. And it's got, he's got the Auto Drive, the Primer Express, the Power Trim Express, the Bullet Sense. He's got 6.5 dies. He's got all this other stuff. Offloading system. You know, it's all automated. And she's selling the whole entire shebang. So, but she's local to me. So trying to put all this stuff in a box to ship it. I mean, if you're local in the DFW area and you're interested in it, you know, reach out to me. I can get you in touch with her. It's not cheap. Uh, this thing's like 6,500 bucks for everything. But if that's something you're in the market for, it's the best of the best. Jacob did not buy cheap stuff. He always had the best of everything. So, but I just don't have, I don't have the time to do it. Uh, and that's bad because I would love to sit there and roll my own um, and know officially how to do it if something were to happen. But I just don't have the time. So, yeah, 338 Lapua was five bucks a round. Yeah. And we sent many of them that day. We shot a lot. But he reloaded all of his also. He was a big reloader. He reloaded his 338. Oh, after a while, he did. He, he bought the 338 first. He reloaded a 6.5. Um, he reloaded a lot of different rounds. And Bald knows him as well. Bald owns, or Bald owns one of his old guns. He was a good guy.
Oh, let's see here. Yeah, Ranger, that's that's what I was gonna say, you know. <laughs> Will my red dots work during next week's eclipse? Listen to the wackos. The world is ending. Just a reminder by ammo, and now the election is coming fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I got an invitation um, from Staccato. Uh, they're having an eclipse viewing at their Austin facility. They're, they've got a new range and everything, and they sent me an email saying, hey, do you want to come out to the uh, to have an event? I'll read it to you all. Just, you know, I mean, I guess it's invite only, but I thought it was pretty cool that they asked me. Um, and not because they've given me anything. I've bought all my stuff, but it is right here. They're calling it Staccato Eclipse Range Day, and I can register, go on there and register, but uh, I said I'm invited, but I'm not going to go. Um, but you can go out and shoot guns at their facility. They're having barbecue and all that other stuff, and you can watch the eclipse there if that's what you want to do. But I'm like, man, I don't have time for that shit. And, you know, I know for the younger people, this is a really cool thing, but I'm older. I know some of y'all are, are as well, and I've seen eclipse. I've been through this. Hell, when I was a kid in grade school, we used to make those special glasses and cut a punch a hole in the paper and, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. So, <clears throat> Oh, yeah, that that about made me throw up or man, <laughs> I'm like, you're doing that to Easter. Good Lord. What is going on, man? He's risen on that day and you're doing this. Uh, I don't even want to say that word because YouTube already hates me. Um, but yeah, that was that was disgusting. Uh but anything else before we jump off, if y'all, I mean, like I said, I mean, I guess we could go a little bit longer if y'all want. You just need to tell me if y'all want to go another 15 minutes, we can, you know, we'll, we can shut it down at 830 if that's what y'all want to do. You know, y'all let me know. I'm not going anywhere. I just got to pack up and stuff like that because I got to head out early in the morning. But I mean, it's not a problem if y'all want to go a little bit longer. Just let me know. Did y'all hear that? Man, that sounds like a gunshot. Keep going. Okay, we'll keep going for a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty sad. Who's <laughs> like I said? I have to pick my words wisely. Uh, you know, but it's uh, it's pretty sad what's who's who's running the ship, so to say. Speaking of ships, man, whew. that's another thing y'all need to get ready for. Uh, when that bridge collapsed, that main bridge handled a lot of automotive stuff. It handled farming supplies, seeds, uh, all kinds of stuff was going in and out of there. But those were the main things, and. Um, now farmers are delayed in getting their seeds. They're going to be delayed for planting the crops. They're going to be delayed for harvest. I mean, they're going to be delayed to getting their uh, equipment they need. Um, automotive is delayed on getting parts that they need because of that bridge. So get ready. It, 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 this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. So and i don't want to be that guy but i think y'all know where i'm going there's just something weird uh, it is something weird Ooh, rich b with a hard question shadow two compact versus staccato okay they are two different animals they are two different animals you're talk, talking double action single action and, and uh single action uh out of the two for me just because of hand size um, I would take the staccato. However, if both fit my hands for the price, I would have a staccato, uh, or excuse me, I would have a, uh, shadow two compact. I mean, I really, I really think it's a great gun 
And y'all know that I'm a CZ guy. Y'all know that I'm a staccato guy. You know I'm a gun guy. I think the Shadow 2 Compact is a fantastic gun. So, there you go. Yeah, I've heard that too. I'm talking about just moving product around. Uh, that's what I was meaning by that. Yeah, I heard that, Pranic. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Oh, yeah, we're just going to pay for that. We're going to pay for that thing. Yeah, or I'm going to pay for it. Who's you? You're not paying for nothing. You ain't got a damn marble, and you, you've lost all the marbles in your head. That's what well, I guess all you hear is when you walk is the marbles in your head. I guess I should rephrase that. Oh, man. Yeah, I was just talking about for transporting items. Um, that was one of the main thoroughfares. So, and hope uh, I know they have other routes they can do, but that's just going to slow down, slow down things even more. So, because some of the areas to reroute them, some of the trucks can't get through some of those areas. Is from what I've heard. I don't know if that's true with some of the big farming equipment on the flatbeds. They can't get through some of these particular roads they were talking about. So who knows? Yeah, that was weird. I know I noticed that too, Pranic. I saw where they, you know, showed all of his information and I was like, whoa, because the captain was from Ukraine and the other guy was from uh India. The second in command was from India. So I was like, man, okay, this is kind of weirder. So who knows? Yeah, but Ranger, that's what I'm meaning. We're all paying for that shit. Ain't nothing for free. We all know that. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a sponsorship, I'm sure. No, he'll still, he'll still be, he'll be, still be hobbling around. Man. Every time I see him, and, and I know some of y'all are younger, but every time I see him, all I can think about is weekend at Bernie's. You know, how they were propping him up, carrying him around, moving him in the corner, and putting shades on him. You know, this dude was dead. And they were dragging him all around. Uh, but uh, I, I just, I thought it was crazy. Uh, let's see. Oh, Clyde. Actually, I didn't say it. Uh, I Believe it or not. Or I'll tell you what, why don't y'all guess what I'm carrying today? Why don't you guess? You know, y'all know I, I have, I don't know, I have five, five main guns in my rotation as far as uh, EDC. So the first person to guess it, I'll throw your comment up there. <laughs> Russell's saying I'm carrying the Rossi Brawler. No, I'm not carrying that one. Okay, here we go. He got it. G19X. Yeah, Brian got it first, believe it or not. Carrying the Glock 19X today. Um, I carried the... What did I carry last week? Oh, the, this past weekend, I carried the... I carried the MPA this past weekend. Uh... The Commander MPA, I carried it all weekend, and then I put the 19X uh, with the big big mag. So I've got the the uh, what is it the 19 rounder. So I've got the 19 rounder in it uh, and a backup mag and the Armsman holster with the TLR7 on it and the Radian afterburner ramjet uh, comp on it. So yes, Bald, you were pretty damn close. I carried that uh, this past weekend. But I'm about to, uh, next week I'm gonna carry the Staccato. So I like to rotate through some. Uh, so. <laughs> oh man, that's a good one. Sig with an O like, damn. Pranic, pranic, pranic. Damn, damn, damn. Look at you, man. That's funny. Uh, yeah, hell, I could have a cookout. Had me some barbecue today. Uh, had, uh, uh, what is it, Oklahoma Joe's. It wasn't bad. Had their sausage and brisket 
uh, wasn't horrible. You know, wasn't wasn't super great, but it wasn't horrible. But I was like, man, I want some barbecue. <laughs> yeah, Pranic wins for next week. The judge, man, I had a judge back in the day. I had one of those things, and I'm I'm just gonna be honest with you. I was not a fan of that gun. I was not a fan of that gun. Shooting 410 in it was worthless. Uh, but you know, I didn't have it very long. I got it and I was all hyped for it. I got it, and then I was like, eh, nah. I think I I think it was it was one of those things where it's like, oh man, you know, I was I was I don't know, I just thought it'd be cool to have one. But when I got one, I wasn't I was not happy with it. Yes. 32 H and R, uh, and the, uh, even the 327, man, that has some popularity too. Man, uh, Floridian with my dad, I haven't been able to do a bunch of barbecuing. I cooked out, I posted some pictures or something. I did some, uh, burgers, some fillets um i don't know like a weekend or two ago and um they were really good but i haven't been able to you know do a whole bunch of cooking i've got tons of meat uh i've got some um picanha i've got some tri-tip i've got a brisket i've got some ribeyes i even have some t-bones i'm not a big t-bone fan but i've got them and I was even thinking about just busting out a T-bone uh, one day and just, you know, maybe throwing up a video. T-bone's not my favorite piece of meat. I'm a ribeye guy. I mean, I love fillets too, but I'm definitely a ribeye guy. A good ribeye is really hard to beat. Yeah. Judge is good for grandma with a 410 buckshot. Yep. I was just not a big, big fan of it. Uh, hello, Brad. How are you? Have you shot the new Rost Martin pistol? What's your opinion on them? I have not, Brad. Uh, being honest with you, I have not shot one. So I couldn't give you a truthful opinion. And I don't like talking out of my ass for stuff that I have not tried. So I, I don't know, sir. I would like to try one, but I have not. Um, I mean, I've seen them. I've played with them. You know, they have them at Texas Gun Experience. They've got the gray, the tan, and the black where they did. They might have sold them. Um, you know, I looked at them, played with the trigger and everything. I mean, there's a lot of things that are cool on it, and it does take P10C mags. I've got tons of those. Um, but, you know, and it's a great price. I mean, hell, they're like 440 bucks or something. But I just don't have any. I haven't shot one yet. But playing with them, I mean, they seem pretty nice. I just don't have any personal hands on with it. Ooh, Clyde did some uh, ribeyes and T-bones this past weekend. Pretty tasty. That's awesome, man. Ooh, firing pin issues on his 38 LCR. Can't close the cylinder. Sending to Ruger. Wow. Okay, that's weird. Huh. So you pull you pull the hammer back and and you've got your uh, little ejector pressed in correctly and you can't close the cylinder that's weird hello chessboard how are you hope you're doing well yep you jumped in at the very end yeah it seems like like if your ejector was sticking you know it, it might be pushed back and not allowing you to shut it if you've got the hammer back that's that's weird I wonder if something's bent you know like when you try to put it in there is your ejection rod bent or anything where it won't go back into the cutout Uh, Bald had a salmon today and riced cauliflower. Does that count? Working on my six pack since I'm going to be available bachelor soon. I like salmon, but I do not do cauliflower at all. I do not do cauliflower. I can do broccoli and all that other stuff, but I am not a, cauliflower, a cauliflower person. I just, I don't know. It just, that shit doesn't have a taste to me. It looks like brains. I don't know. I've just never been a cauliflower person. 
you know, like if it's in one of those spring mixes where you get some of it, I'll still try to push it out of the way. But if I happen to get a you know, bite of one, I'm not going to die. But it's just I can't sit there and eat cauliflower. Kind of makes me want to puke thinking about it. <clears throat> They're hyping that Ross Martin on every YouTube channel or so, it seems. I think it will be an uphill battle. So many known brands already selling the same thing, and I agree with that. Um, yeah, and they sent, you know, a bunch of those guns out to people. I honestly, I was even mentioned uh, when they were going to send those out. But I was like, eh, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I wouldn't have tried it. But I don't know. I, I just... You know, there are so many options. I mean, they're, they've got CZ, you know, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, you know, Glock, uh, SIG. I mean, they, they definitely have an uphill battle. There's nothing that super stands out on that one other than the price. You know, and they're made in Dallas, Texas, which is cool. I, I, I do appreciate that. And I don't know if you know the history on it, but it's a husband and a wife team. The wife, her great-grandfather started springfield that's what's really crazy like the sites take uh xd uh sites it takes a p10 mag i mean it's it's kind of you know it's kind of cool and the story that they told around it uh chris from the 740 had them on his chat and i thought that was pretty cool uh listening to the story about how they kind of started this company so i mean it comes from good roots uh you know as far as firearms but um you know i don't i don't know uh, any idea on the new what the new CZ will be? I think it's going to be a P10C, P10F. I think that's what they're going to be focusing on. And just my opinion, I don't know this. I haven't heard this from them or any of that kind of stuff. I'm not one of the full-blown insiders. They don't call me to ask my opinion. But I definitely think it's going to be a P10C revamp slash P10F revamp. They're not going to go back to the M and the S and all that other crap. Um, I think they're going to be going after the compact and the full size for LE and military since Colt is kind of taking the helm. That's my opinion. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be right, but I don't know that for sure. You know, just with what I've seen. And the reason what makes me think that is a lot of places are still blowing out the P10Cs, the ones that are all in stock now. So if you're blowing all those out and selling them for really great prices, and if you want a great gun, that's a good price gun right there. The hell, they're cheaper than the Ross Martins right now. Um, and they're fantastic guns. I've got three of them, and I love all of them. Uh, but that's what I think they're going to be doing. Hello, I'll be droned. How are you? Haven't seen you on before, but you're welcome. To, to, I'm glad you're here. I always love uh, new people to jump in and give their opinions. Hello, Rodima. How are you? Woodbury, Woodward, Woodford Reserve in my pantry. Yeah, I love whiskey. I am a whiskey guy. Uh, let's see. Um, picked up a Taurus Raging Hunter uh, in 357 5-inch barrel and got a Bull Armory Axe FS Hatchet. Yeah, is that the, or is that the Tomahawk? The new one with the ports? Um, I know Bull released that one. Uh, I don't have one or anything like that, but uh, yeah, I, uh, man, whiskey, a good glass of like a three finger, four finger, that'd be that'd be pretty good right now. I could definitely use a whiskey. Got hit in the head and the shoulder by a freaking trunk today. That was fun. Ripped my damn shirt. Got a hole in my damn shirt. Um, and I got hit by the car door. <laughs> Opened the car door. The wind hit it right when I was getting in. Smacked me. You know, I lived. Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, it's been fun. 50 mile an hour winds today. I'm like, what the hell is going on? But, and then we had hail last night and a crap load of rain. Man, it rained. I mean, it was big time raining here in Tulsa. 
But it's 834. We will go ahead and shut this bad boy down because I got to pack up. I don't know if y'all know this. I carry two computers, one for work, one for YouTube. So I got to pack up all the computers, the plugs, the this, the that. Just get everything ready because I got to roll early in the morning. Um, but uh, yeah, and like I said, I have completely upfitted that kel so it's completely done. Um, you won't even recognize it now. So, but I'll release the shooting video as stock. Um, I'll probably release that Friday so y'all can check that out. Um, I run two full mags through it. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't really want to say much more. And I'm the only one in there for most of the video. So it's really clear. You can hear it perfectly. So you won't have this bang, 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 bang in the background. Um, and then I'll do a part three, probably, or series three, where I, episode three, where I've got it on the table, showing you all the upgrades and all the parts that I bought. You know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, you know how YouTube is. I probably can't put a parts list on there, but I can tell you the names of all the parts. Uh, it's probably... I think a lot of, put it this way, I did it like I wanted it. Uh, hopefully, y'all will enjoy it too. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it also has a purpose behind it. Um, but, you know, we'll get into that later. But, uh, yeah, and I know Rodima said that it didn't work out well for him. So, we'll see, you know, basically I've got a video saying, will it run? So, um, you know, y'all can check that out. It'll be out Friday. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or anything after this chat, please leave those and I will get back to you in case you're looking at this on the replay. Um, also, I and I haven't seen him again, but uh, I did send out that holster to DB. So, you know, hopefully he enjoys it. And uh, I'm going to be clearing out a bunch of stuff. Uh, so y'all like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, because I'm going to be clearing out a lot of stuff. And uh, I thought about like for the dedicated people that are on here and the dedicated su subscribers, I might start, you know, like when we do these chats, I might just be like, hey, what kind of gun do y'all have or what kind of whatever do you have? And y'all can throw up some list of stuff you have and you might be getting a care package. So I'm probably going to start doing that. I'm not a big giveaway guy, so I'm not going to basically listed as hey i'm doing a giveaway you know so all the giveaway whores come jumping out of the woodwork i'm not about that but if i see you and i know who you are and you're a subscriber and you've been with me for a while i'm going to start hooking i'm going to start blessing some people how about we list it like that so i think y'all will start liking that Uh, let's see here. Big J, I got some gear, holsters, and some stuff that is in top condition if you want to give it away. No, I mean, I've got a lot of stuff, too. I, I don't want people to send in stuff. I mean, unless you want to, uh, you might even still have my address. Because uh, I know we've, uh, you sent me some stuff one time, too. So, but, yeah, I mean, if you want to do that, you know, I can, uh, you know, I can, I'd be, you know, glad to give away your stuff if you want me to do that. Uh, but I'm thinking about giving away some of my stuff uh, just because I have so much stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm even talking about like probably giving away some dots, uh, you know, just blessing some people up. That's what I'm thinking about doing. I've been thinking about it for a little while and, uh, you know, and I've been doing, I, I'll, let me just tell you this and I don't brag or any of that kind of shit, but I've been doing this behind the scenes for a long time. Uh, you know, subscribers, they'll send me, you know, emails or something like that. And they'll say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about getting this or this or this, or I just bought this particular gun. And I'm like, oh, you did. And I'm like, how about I bless you with some grips? And, you know, because I had them. And so I just send them to them. I don't announce it. I don't do any of that shit because that's not what I'm about. But I think I'm going to start hooking up some people. So. Anyway, if y'all want to do something like that, subscribe, stay up, 
join the chats if you want and i'm probably going to do it during the chats so you know again if i put a giveaway at whatever thousand subscribers man i get people i've never even heard of jumping in going oh i want this i want that and you know and i'm not saying you know i'm not trying to do it to get more subscribers that's what i'm trying to say i'm just trying to do it for the ogs and everybody who's been around and you know made this chat happen so i figured spread the wealth how about that but uh let's see here uh five five six uh revolver is a terrible idea you don't have any velocity there's absolutely no velocity that's why it's a terrible idea no velocity you might as well shoot a 22 revolver so that's the problem with that they've done it they've had those 556 five, derringers and man they were a joke people were shooting them and they they were doing good to bust open a freaking uh orange <laughs> so they just don't you know it has to have length of, to build the velocity because uh, it just can't burn all the powder. So that's kind of like when people get like really, really, really short 5.56s, they're noisy as shit and they throw a flame that long, um, but they just don't really have any punch. People have done like five, 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 uh, you know, 5.5 inch barrels, 7.5 inch barrels, and they just can't burn. They can't burn the powder off. So a pistol would be even worse. So that's my opinion, Alex. But, <clears throat> you know, if somebody wants to do it and that's what you're into, I know, I can't remember the name of the company who made it, though. It was, uh, it was one of those little breakovers and you put two 556s five, five, in it and click it back. Somebody made it and I just can't remember what that, what that was. Uh, let's see, Alex, say, nice guy, uh, nice guy, Big J, stay safe, brother, appreciate you, God bless. Yes, you too. Yeah, everyone, man, like I always say, love one another. If you haven't seen some family members, you know, reach out to them. Tell them you love them. You're thinking about them. Um, you know, with all the stuff going on right now, a lot of people need that little, you know, they need to. A lot of people are, are suffering with mental stuff right now. Not myself. I mean, you know, we all go through crap. But, you know, I've got some friends that are that are. Uh, you know, feeling the hurt and the strain and all that other stuff with the economy right now. So reach out to people, man. Let them know you're thinking about them and that you're there for them if they need you. Um, and any of y'all, man, if y'all need anything, you just want to talk or whatever, reach out to me. You know, a lot of y'all already do. Uh, so, you know, I'll help in any way I can. So y'all have a great night. And remember, an unarmed nation is a very weak nation, so we all got to carry on. Y'all stay safe out there. God bless. Love your families. Give everybody a hug and y'all take care. We will talk about it next week. Have a great night, everybody.